I'm Rebecca Catalanello, Deputy uh, Editor of PolitiFact here at the Pointer Institute. Welcome back to United Fakes, uh, Facts of America, a festival of fact checking. We'd like to thank our sponsors of today's events, including Craig Newmark Philanthropies, AmeriHealth, Caritas, Facebook, TikTok, and Microsoft. And to those of you in attendance today who made donations to PolitiFact or Pointer to support this work, thank you so much. You can donate in the future by going to pointer.org slash support. Our session today is about mind control, how it manifests itself in the current political and technological climate, and how we can help loved ones who have been impacted by it. It seems like we all know someone who has fallen down the rabbit hole of misinformation. And in some cases, we've seen how that can change the nature of our relationships and mental health. As an editor who sorts through piles of misinformation on social media every day, looking for popular yet false claims to check, I'm fascinated by this topic. We, have, we often have the tendency to chalk seemingly ridiculous claims up to kookery, but our next guest knows better. He says it's not just kookery, it's often the result of serious intent to control people's minds. Let me tell you about Dr. Stephen Hassan. Dr. Hassan is a mental health professional, author, and founding director of the Freedom of the Mind Resource Center. He's an expert in undue influence tactics used by authoritarian leaders and destructive cults. And he's author of several books, including the very interesting The Cult of Trump, um, Combating mind, Cult Mind Control, Freedom of the Mind, and Releasing the Bonds, Empowering People to Think for Themselves. How he got to be an expert in this field is another story. Steve Hassan was 19 and enrolled at Queens College when he was deceptively recruited into a cult known as the Unification Church. You know this group as the Moonies, which is named after its leader, Sun Myung Moon. Steve spent two and a half years in the group until sleep deprived. He crashed a van he was driving into a tractor trailer. And once he was hospitalized, he reached out to his sister. What followed was a week-long effort by his family to depro deprogram him. They incorporated the help of former Moonies who helped Hassan gain perspective on the depth of mind control he'd been subjected to and slowly to heal. He spent the past 45 years helping others to do the same. Welcome, Dr. Hassan. Thank you so much. I'm so honored and I just can't thank Neil Brown and Christine Amanpour because boy, Christine really hit some of the key points for this section. I'm so excited to talk with you, um, and I'm really glad you're talking with us this morning. Thank you, Rebecca. I also want to just say 45 years ago this week was my wake-up moment from my deprogramming, where I had the first critical thoughts that Moon was a liar, that he was therefore untrustworthy, and therefore he couldn't be a man of God. And once I had those critical thoughts hit my consciousness, it was like a pile of, of cards going plop, 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 plop. I snapped out and I was like, what happened to me? I, I want to hear more about that process. So let's just dive in. <laughs> Your work yeah, uh, focused on undue influence. Um, tell, us, tell us what undue influence is in layman's terms. So um, what I'd like to do is ask you to put up the influence continuum slide. Um, and what is important for... Uh, everyone to understand is that there is due influence or ethical influence that involves informed consent and undue influence, lying, big lies like we're experiencing now, but also withholding vital information or distorting it, um, and control of behavior, information, thoughts, and emotions to rework a person's a sense of self and sense of identity and belief system. And I went completely to fascism from a, from a liberal Jewish upbringing. By the way, I grew up 1.3 miles from Donald Trump in Queens. And I was wanting to subvert the United States of democracy because I thought God needed to run the world and we would need to er eradicate anyone who wasn't, a, you know, one of God's chosen believers. And so when I woke up and I went, how did this happen to me? I was educated about the Holocaust. I became an anti-Semitic, you know, believing that the Holocaust was necessary. 
I had, and I fasted for three days for Nixon during Watergate because Moon said God wanted him to be president. So I've been in that rabbit hole. And thanks to my family's love, I was rescued. And the rest of my life journey has been helping to explain to the public, hey, everyone's human. You could be vulnerable, have compassion. And we are experiencing a psychological warfare situation right now with authoritarianism, which is on the right side, against pro Uh, human rights, democracy forces on the left side. And so when I talk about authoritarianism, that can be left authoritarianism as well as right-wing authoritarianism. But we have a method now for understanding how uh, the mind works. And like there was a tech revolution, a revolution in, in medicine, there's been a revolution in understanding how the mind works and how it can be manipulated. And the solution is really mass education about social psychology, about hypnosis, about how this works. You talk in your work about technology making us more vulnerable about, as a population. Can you kind of describe why and how can we be less vulnerable? Right. So human beings, I mean, people forget, but I lived through it. I mean, I grew up in 54 and I got a black and white TV in my household. (laughs) It went went to color and the Internet came in the 90s. But this generation is now raised on the Internet. But it's changing our the way our brains function. It's shortening our attention span. And there's a tremendous amount of neuroscience research going on to not only gather data on people, I understand 5,000 data points for every American voting citizen, information combined with the addictive social platforms, combined with our enemies, when I say enemies, I mean authoritarian enemies, and that is state actors from without, but also authoritarian cults within that have been operating in our country. And so it's a deadly mix, but there is hope and there is a solution. And there are millions of former members who've experienced it firsthand. And so there's methods for how to help people who have been indoctrinated to to get out, just like someone helped me. But I think that one of the things that we're struggling with, um, I think, is figuring out like to a person. So I think if you had asked me like two years ago, if I knew any folks who'd fallen prey to cults or mind control, I would have said no. (laughs) But um, today, I mean, I can count on a couple of hands how many friends and relatives who say they've witnessed like big shifts in uh, the behavior of people they know or love. Um, Sometimes it's like political. You know, my mom believes the 2020 election was stolen. My mom, I think, is watching. She's doesn't believe that, but just as an example. Hi, mom. (laughs) Happy to talk with you. (laughs) And sometimes it's a conspiracy. Like my uncle believes that uh, COVID-19 vaccine uh, contains a tracking device. So like on the spectrum, like what's your characterization of these beliefs and their origins? And, And are they signs that my loved one is being subjected to undue influence? Yes. The the short answer is yes. I believe they have been subjected to lies, disinformation, psyops. QAnon, I believe, is not a conspiracy theory. It's a psyop that functions like an authoritarian cult. Uh, The people that I respect who've been doing deep research on this site, uh, internal enemies of democracy, former military intelligence officials, Uh, names like Michael Flynn, but there are many others. Um, And what I want to say is the pandemic and the cult of Trump with the insurrection, failed insurrection attempt, has created such a stew of vulnerability, the economic pressures, and people are stressed out. And we're wired to our our technologies for survival. People need to hug each other and be together. And it's been a weird, uh, horrible time, which has enabled these authoritarians to come in repeating lies over and over, projecting their own mal malintent on others who are trying to uphold the law and are trying to work collaboratively to to aspirationally lift up America. 
Um, and we're in a war right now. It would be a mistake to say anything less. And um, I really want to amplify what Christine said about how we dealt with Joe McCarthy, how we dealt with Father uh, Coughlin, which I, I referenced in the Cult of Trump book. These historical solutions can be updated in this modern technological age, but we need platform creators and owners to be part of the solution and not part of the problem. Um, now, is, can you kind of talk about how, um, who is vulnerable? Um, I, I mean, we talk, I know that we're in an environment where we're, you, you say we're, we're a little more, we're more exposed and we need things that we're not getting. Um, and, um, but is there like a, a range? Um, Sure. So I think being human, we're all vulnerable to being tricked and lied to. The, the question is, what media are we listening to? Are we only in a bubble where we're hearing one side or are we open and hearing different sides and using our critical judgment to, to think about it? Um, I, there's a couple of concepts I really want to uh, explain to the listeners. One is the notion of a dissociative problem, which means there was the real Steve Hassan, and then I became the Mooney Steve Hassan. The real Steve Hassan was still there, but this new identity who believed he was the son of Moon and his wife uh, took over, and it was this me that helped me get out. And so the public needs to understand if you have relatives like you have your mom, you need to remember your real mom is still in there. She's just been hacked. Think of it like a mind virus, like there's the coronavirus. This is a mind virus that's been installed, but like we have antivirus software. So there are solutions. And I think former members like myself who have done their homework, who understand the psychology of hypnosis and mind control, explaining the story and letting everyone know it could happen to you under the right set of circumstances. And what I want to say to your listeners is stop demonizing the people who are in this cult of Trump. They're, for the most part, good people. There are corrupt people. There are people in cults that are following their pastors. They're following their, you know, spiritual masters, quote unquote, loose quotes. But these are on authoritarian cults. These are not legitimate, in my opinion, cults. Um, and so stop calling names, stop, stop trying to use facts to get somebody out. Because when, when my family was, my father confronted me, how come Moon has an M16 gun factory? What kind of Messiah has an M16 gun factory? It just made me chant, crush Satan, crush Satan in, as a cult member. So what works best is asking a good question in a respectful way waiting for an answer, and then following up and understanding that the person who still is in there, wants to know the truth, wants to do the responsible thing, and want, doesn't like to be exploited and lied to. And that was the thing that woke me up, was realizing I trusted Moon, thinking he was the greatest man on earth, the God's representative, and he wasn't at all. He actually was a convicted felon eventually. So what's an example of, um, of a respectful question? So another critical um, part of my strategy in coaching families how to help loved ones is to bring them back before they got recruited and indoctrinated, reminding them of the good times that you're, you're that your, I'm your daughter, I love you, showing photos, videos these types of warm, loving, non-confrontational things, then asking them respectfully with a frame that says, look, you believe I've been brainwashed by the left-wing media, right? Maybe I have been. Let's, let's seek the truth together. Right. And let's take turns. But first, go back in time. Tell me what was the first thing that got your attention that you started taking it seriously. And then let's watch that video together and discuss it. And then it will be my turn to share a video. 
and you watch it with me and we'll discuss it together. So it's this truth seeking frame versus I'm right, you're wrong. You know, you're brainwashed. I'm, I'm free. No, let's, let's be scientists together. Let's seek the truth. And what I love about ethical media, as I love about ethical social science and science, is that it's a error detection and correction system. And I got that term from a great book called Propaganda, uh, Network Propaganda, uh, that was used in my research for the Cult of Trump book. But think about that. As a community, we do error detection and correction. Ethical, ethical people say, I was wrong, I got it wrong, let's correct it and move forward, versus the authoritarians that say, no, I have the truth, you have to follow me, you have to believe me no matter what, or you're a traitor, or the enemies are going to get you, some type of fear tactic. I, I want to get to some questions if we have um, some from viewers, but before we do, um, I want to kind of get your, your take on this. Um, you so in your book um the cult of trump you write that once you notice the connection between trump and moon you can stop seeing them um and you you've indicated that you didn't intend you didn't plan on writing a book like this in your career um <laughs> i'm not a political person you know historically i mean i care but I'm, I, w I was always interested in healing people, helping people avoid getting recruited and indoctrinated, helping people to recover. Yeah. The thing that struck was blatant from 2015 was that Trump was a malignant narcissist, which is a very important concept because most cult leaders have the stereotypical profile of malignant narcissism. And what that means is, lack of empathy, grandiosity, need for attention, exploitation. But the malignant part is thinks they're above the law, pathological lying, harassing, silencing, paranoid. So you go through the list, and all of these are on my website, freedomofmind.com, by the way, or in Chapter 3, where I com compare Trump with Jim Jones, Moon, and Hubbard of Scientology, as well as Keith Ranieri and a few other cult leaders. But once you understand, and it's back to the slide that's on my website, the influence continuum as well, these are the people that we have to beware. Um, as ethical people, we don't want to be in a controlling relationship or have a boss with these characteristics. But then when I started doing the deep dive, I learned the cult I was in, they were at the insurrection attempt. Sean Moon was there. Uh, tweeting that Antifa was doing it, and Moon's Washington Times newspaper was, was putting out this information. It was Antifa as well. So I could have been there if my family didn't care and didn't make the effort to rescue me, because there are people who've been there for 40, 50 years now, and it's so shocking and upsetting. But there's another cult that I realized that Michael Pence is in called The Family. Jeffrey Charlotte did a uh, several best-selling books on this particular cult. It was born in the age of anti-communism, and it was basically taking the techniques learned from the CIA, from MKUltra, etc., and saying, how can we use this to promote America? So there's a whole dark history in intelligence work of using proxy groups, especially religious groups, cults, to do and, and with the extremist groups as we're seeing now with Hamas and, and ISIS and Boko Haram, uh, exa uh, for example, are being used, you know, by different state actors. And for me, what we need to do is have a meta view, take a complex systems approach and look at this. And we have to start with planetary survival as our goal and work backwards for how are we going to survive the next hundred years with how things are developing the way they are? Because I'm really, truly worried that we are in a, in a war right now. And there's a, an attempted coup that's trying to be launched against the United States of America. 
Well, one of the things that I'm struggling with is um, the scale of this. I think um, as of April, we saw that more than half of Republicans polled by Reuters um, said they believe that the election loss resulted from illegal voting or election rigging. Um, and it sounds like the way to sort of help address um, people who are, believe, you know, it sounds like a very individualized approach, like the way that we reach people um, through like the, the deprogramming de that you discuss is it's very, it's a very individualized process. So like with the majority of an American political party unswayed by the fact, um, I'm just wondering kind of what's your take on that? And then what are the do's and don't's of interacting with someone who believes that the 2020 election was stolen from your- Yeah, opinion? great. So great question. Um, so we have to start with um, understanding that the media needs to be educated about mind control, that there really is undue influence, and what are the characteristics. I believe the public needs to have to be educated about social psychology mechanisms and specific uh, messaging needs to be parsed and dissected and explained to folks. But we also need the families, the people who actually know these people, to spend the time educating themselves first. And a universal, and what helped me get out was learning about Chinese communist brainwashing. Because as a Mooney, Satan was in communism. So when I was uh, in my deprogram experience and the ex-Moonies were saying, we'd like to share Robert Lifton's model on Chinese communist brainwashing, I was like, sure. And then we went through all eight criteria and it applied to the, to the cult, to the, to the family. That's what the cult was called internally. Um, and then I was confused because we were God, they were Satan, but we were doing the same brainwashing techniques. So that was part of the foundation. I love talking to cult of Trump people about Chinese communist brainwashing techniques and traffickers and pimps and how they recruit and indoctrinate people to become either slave labor or sex slaves and using the bite model of authoritarian control, controlling behavior, information, thoughts, and emotions to create a new identity, new belief system. By using these as case examples and kind of backing your way into with a conversation with someone in the cult of Trump or somebody who still believes in QAnon, for example, that's the key, empowering the person to realize it versus you trying to persuade them out. That doesn't work. We, um, if you want to know more about the bite model, you can find information about that on um, Dr. Kaplan's website, freedomofmind.com. Um, I want to take right quick before we leave. Um, um, and I see that, that I forgot to say there was a second slide that we, yeah, there we prepared. <laughs> but, but trust me, the window is open. Please learn. And if you care about human rights and freedom, we need to understand with with Joe McCarthy, as Christine said, and Father Coughlin, we need to deplatform the messaging of these uh, uh, lies and call them out for what they are. We have a great uh, kind of personal question from Ellen Cortesias from Verifiles Files in the Philippines. She says, how do you prevent yourself from being hardened and jaded with all the miseries you, that you witness in the course of your work? Um, I have a loving wife and son and great family and friends. I belong to a Jewish community for the last 23 years. I, um, I do things for self-care, but I am so passionate about this because if it hadn't happened to me, I never would believe it could happen to intelligent, educated people from good families. Um, and I guess I also kind of wonder, like, what what hope is there as you, I mean, you and I have talked a little bit before, and it sounds like, I mean, you see this as a really serious um, concern, you know, st uh, an era of, like, Absolutely. There's, there is an assault on our democratic institutions. It's, it's called PSYOPs. It's called fourth generation warfare. There's fifth generation as well. 
which I've written about in the book. Um, and it's to delegitimize truth, saying, oh, it's a post-truth world. No, it's not. Truth still matters. It's the age of undue influence that we're living in. And, and um, you know, we, we, we just, there's so much that needs to be done, but we, our biggest resource is people and, and, and educating and mobilizing people to, uh, to care about each other and reach out and be nice. And I'm telling you, as a Mooney, I experienced people cursing me and throwing things at me, made me stronger in the, in the, in the cult. And somebody saying, you look hot, can I, buy you, can I buy you a drink? And it's the buying the drink. My friend Arno, who is in a neo-Nazi cult, was given a sandwich by his Jewish employer it's think acts of kindness and love and support that is more powerful in the end than mind control because mind, mind control cults suck. They really do. It's very suffocating. It's hard to hate all the time and be paranoid all the time. But people who are loving and kind and compassionate, your heart opens up. I love something that you wrote in your Cult of Trump book, and it's this. Um, if something is true, it will stand up to scrutiny. On the other hand, if a belief cannot withstand criticism or research, then it may not be worth holding. Certitude is not evidence of truth, nor does repetition make it true. Um, if anything, repetition should make you suspicious. Truth always stands up to scrutiny on its merits. Before we yeah, go- Yeah, exactly. And I would just say the more grandiose the claim, the more substantial the evidence you need right? So if someone says, oh, I have the cure to cancer, we need the double-blind studies replicated over and over before we accept that claim. Yeah. Um, and one last question. How can, um, how can our work as journalists sort of um, from knowing from your work, from your perspective, and knowing what you know about mind control, what can journalists, especially fact-checkers, kind of learn from, from what you, you do? Yeah, so I think PolitiFact is awesome. I'm honored to be, you know, asked to do this. I think it's the media literacy piece is wonderful. I love the project with the young people, helping other young people as well. But we need to, to uh, teach everyone about social psychology and how to uh, understand um, different concepts that are being used. Because that's the, I mean, do you remember back when you were told, Rebecca, you never give your credit card number to a stranger, no matter how the, good the story is, no matter how many of your loved ones they use, you never give your, but you know what's happened now is all of our personal data has been taken and is now being used by dark forces against us on social media and on the internet. And therefore we have to stand up and really think about what's the planet we want to be part of? Is it authoritarian or is it pro-democracy and human rights? And I'm saying we need to live together on this beautiful planet and save it. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Hassan. Um, we're out of time, but I just want to thank you again for a great session and for being part of United Facts of America. The work you do is so critical right now. And to those of, the, those of you watching, um, if you want to find more resources about mind control and how to help your, your loved ones, Dr. Hassan has a host of resources available on his website, freedomofmind.com.